Now, from this uh, discussion, it is clear that what may be the shape of function that we will apply for node embedding. So, here I have just captured it from the paper. So, according to the paper, the embedding for a particular node i at any given time t that is uh, represented by embedding function emd for node i at time t that changes with respect to the static case you can compare then you will, it will be easy to understand we have taken here all the nearest neighbor for given node i here we have again taken the all nearest neighbor for a given node i but we have taken in k hope means uh, in the simplest setting we have just used one hope nearest neighbor but here we are considering k hope nearest neighbor from the batch operations it is uh, clear to understand that instead of a given means uh, just uh, considering a particular time we are taking some time interval and then consider the messages we assume that that may be useful so we have taken one time interval also now this is a learnable function so it is the function is almost similar here the message part is different here you can see that the message part is different. So what are the new things here? So the message part generally in the static case contains two nodes and edges. Here nodes, two nodes and edges are there. B, I, B, J and E, I, J, K, it is there. But other than we have two additional nodes. Uh, two additional information that is coming from the updated memory part or memory updater that is updated information about node interaction and node event for i node i and j at a given time t so these are the differences that we achieve here. Now to understand what is SI, what is SJ and how it actually works, we have to go through the functions like message function. As I discussed that in this paper it shows that message function captures the messages for interaction events and the single node event so generally message function contains two different kind of messages or interaction event also here the first interaction event mit means for node i we are considering node i as a source node it considers the messages that is stored in the memory before event time t for target node sj before given time t the time differences and the interaction between ij at time t now if we take in reverse considering mj as a source node then in that case memory because it is a multi graph so both S i and S both may be different because there may be multiple edges possible between two nodes. So this be very careful here. So here it covers the information given in memory before time t for node j, information for node i given before time t in memory, time differences and interaction between i and j at time t. Now the second part is node level interaction event. I'm sorry, node event, single node event. So single node event just considers that uh, what is uh, the previous value stored in the memory, what is the current value, what is the time. 
so this is the three information captured by the message function this is very important because this will go here now the second part is memory message aggregator so this is the message aggregator function that is given in the paper so the message aggregator function considers that times are following like t1 t2 t3 t4 till tv so it is uh, tv is the means newest kind of time so in that case it identifies that which may be the most useful and updated information so based on that it separates out the informations like here it is the message how you can see that it aggregated the useful informations and remove some outdated information like m2 t1 so this is the function of message aggregator and message aggregator works for all the messages three types three different kinds of messages collected here now for source and target now again this is the function of memory updater because all this information is coming from memory updater so memory updater actually the functions given here as uh, sorry the equation given here in the paper according to that the memory updater considers updates the memory based on the new messages outcomes that is coming from the message aggregator like here i have identified a discussed so now the memory updater contains the latest information that the system used to compute the node embedding now the next and the last important part is how to compute embedding because we get this we have the memory updater functions we assume that it may be similar to the traditional uh, node embedding functions like learnable function but there are in this paper they have proposed a temporal graph attention scheme to learn this embedding so uh, so the as a last part we will try to understand what is the temporal graph attention here and how it actually works then it will be very easy to understand that how actually the entire system is working now the next and important part is the temporal graph attention so the temporal graph attention to compute it for node i at layer l and time t they use the multi layer perceptron at layer l and for that they have used the hidden layer outcomes from layer l minus 1 at a given time t and uh, concatenated it with uh, the multi uh, with the multi head attention output for layer l of given connected node at a given time t so to compute the multi head attention for uh, node i at layer l in a given time t they have used query key and value at layer l on a given time t and to compute the query value at given time t they have used the previous hidden layer output and some uh, random initial space that we can learn and fill some so it concrete it with this and then file it as a query and for key value and for cl they have assigned it and defined the cl which are equal to key and value pair this is nothing but equal to concatenation of the hidden layer output previous layer hidden layer output at uh, time t1 and again uh, interaction event at time t1 and then they define that file related operation like a generic time encoding so for a time encoding that is given uh, gives the differences between the uh, t minus current time uh, the given time t minus uh, time t1 based on that it computed all such kind of uh, encodings uh, till time tn and uh, they use all those things combinedly they concatenate uh, all those uh, sorry they combinedly use all those functions and uh, use as a key and value pair and finally they have applied a multi layer perceptrons 
to combine the reference nodes the representations with the aggregate information that uh, they got here and uh, to get the final embedding for the node they have also represented that uh, for a faster means uh, simpler and faster aggregation over the graph they have uh, identified a few more operations like uh, how they can use the redo operations with uh, over this uh, kind of combinations with the weighted uh, matrix to get the node embedding so these are some uh, ways to get the node embeddings and after getting the node embeddings uh, i mean so uh, i think uh, there is nothing just uh, they apply the decoder to get the age probabilities to compute the age probabilities uh, by using some multi layer process counts or some by using something so here this is a final diagram in this paper second diagram which identifies everything like from batch processing they use the raw message store from raw message store the message function identify the messages then aggregate messages and then updated memory they use the updated memory for embedding purpose they got the node embeddings and then apply the decodings decoder and then got the age probabilities and then applied it in the final learning process so here one term like a multi head attention came now to if you want to learn more about what is the multi head attention and how it actually work in the context of the graph you can watch my other video tutorials that is given in the description box so this is the complete description of the paper how it is actually working so hope uh, i think you have enjoyed uh, you would have enjoyed this uh, paper and i feel that uh, this may be useful and uh, may help in doing better research uh, in the area of dynamic graph